My name is Phil Wincrip, and I've been trying to resolve disputes with the Commonwealth Bank since September 2021. In 2009, I had two investment properties and a house at Cairns, and the bank required me to use them as securities. And I was given an illegal predatory loan. In August 2018, I found out that I could not resolve disputes without a copy of the 2004 Code of Banking Practice. This was not provided to me when I used to loan contracts. In 2021, I wrote to the bank because under the Code of Banking Practice, it had to provide effective disclosure of information, which means the Code because it was a part of my loan agreement. I contacted my Commonwealth Bank Mooney Ponds branch manager, James Dargan, because he is named in the code. He had been trained to have adequate knowledge of the provisions to this code. He wasn't. So the bank did not follow the rules set out in the code. I again wrote to Dargan because ASIC Regulatory Guide 165 in 2001, which deals with the remediation, was not included in the code. I said, the failure to include this in the 2004 code was unfair. I said, Australian Bankers Association should have included Regulatory Guide 165. On 21 December 2021, I obtained my financial losses report prepared by a forensic accountant. I understood that the forensic accountants are highly skilled and required to produce information to a standard suitable in a court of law. On 26 January 2022, I forwarded my losses report to the Managing Director, Matt Common. Neither he nor the bank challenged my financial losses report. On April 1, 2022, I wrote to Common because it was apparent the bank was not going to comply with the 2004 code and therefore I asked him to deduct $4.5 million that I owed the bank from the $11 million damages. It appeared the bank had no interest in resolving the dispute with small businesses like mine. At that stage, I signed a statutory declaration claiming Section 192E of the Crimes Act, a person who, by deception, dishonestly obtains any financial advantage or causes any financial disadvantage, is guilty of the offence of fraud. The bank's directors misled, so did the Australian's Securities Investment Commission, ASIC, and the responsible minister, the treasurer. Commonwealth Bank directors should have included ASIC Regulatory Guide 165 prior to adopting the 2004 code. This meant they were the architects of Australia's greatest crime. ASIC was a party to this arrangement. I wrote to Ms Penny Mackay, acting Commonwealth Ombudsman. Ms Mackay and other members of the Commonwealth a Woodsman's office in Canberra took no action to the fact that bank directors and ASIC executives were complicit with crimes by not meeting Regulatory Guide 165. I also included a copy of my letter to the local member, Parliament, Bill Shorten and some senators. I hope our politicians would sort out the system of fraud which has damaged millions of small businesses and farmers. I received no replies. So, on December the 7th, 2022, I considered 52 Liberal and Labor members of the Senate were concealing crimes, which is a crime in itself. So I wrote to them expecting they would reply within 21 days. Only one senator has replied, but she did not direct the allegations to ASIC, which has powers to suspend or cancel Commonwealth Bank's licence. I appreciated the senator's comment, but this needs more action. This is a national problem, not just mine.